So hi everybody and uh, welcome to today's session uh, here where I'll be painting one of these uh, kind of meadows again like I did last time and I will be working on this piece here which I was filling in partially in our last uh, video as well. So what I'm gonna do is I've been painting some meadows recently um, and I really like the way that they've been turning out so I wanted to do something similar. I'm just looking in here for some of my paints. I seem to have a paint missing which is my yellow ochre so I'm just looking for that. Um, so I really like the way I've been using the yellow ochre to get the background on this so I'm just going to squeeze out some white acrylic paint, titanium white, Oops, not a very nice sound, um, and some of the yellow ochre here as well. So I'm just going to squeeze some of that out, it's probably too much, I'll just squeeze that. Um, can use some of that later on. Um, and I'll just build with this a little bit. I'm trying to think what else I'll use down here. So I want to use a darker color down here. I could use the blues and it's going to end up being a green. I'll be using my burnt umber as well and things. So I might use the burnt umber a little bit. Just see how it goes. So I'm just going to start straight away with that so that there's no more time wasting involved. And I'm going to be using like my flat brush here, which I'm just, well, I've just dampened it in water. But so what I'm going to do is take some of the, uh, the yellow, should I? Now do the white first and just put some of that in. So this is me just going straight in there. It's really interesting trying to organize doing something like this and then as you're going along you suddenly remember oh wait there's that tool that I didn't prep. So right now I'm remembering okay there is the spritzer which I didn't fill with water but yeah I'm fine with that. So I'm gonna stand for this. I, I like to sit down but I want to make sure this films so I'm gonna keep watching to make sure that everything's working. So I'm trying to make this video maximum of half an hour. So this will be a speed level painting. So I'm adding the yellow ochre now like this and going upwards and it'll get lighter because it's mixing in with the white and then going downward and adding will be darker. So I've added that and then I'm going to add some of the burnt umber at the bottom which my I've not cleaned up my brush so you can see why it's quite light when I've added this in and it's not really blending as well as it could do um, just different things I've been thinking recently uh, if I put my gloves on I'll be able to try and smudge some bits with this because you can kind of see the brush marks on this which I don't always necessarily like but I'm just gonna do some kind of bits in here and mix in a bit mm, and just make my brush as light as possible. So now I'm kind of overlaying and going back. I'm going to actually because I want this to dry to a certain level I didn't really want to put too many layers so I might let this dry and I'll start working on the next layer. I'll stop playing with this. Um, I clean this brush off. I could always wash it but I don't like my brush being too wet so I'm gonna come in at the top with some more kind of with a hmm I think it may be a lighter yellow up here but just see I might introduce what yellow is this? Lemon yellow. A little lemon yellow in there. The top part towards the white sky. So I'm just gonna Add some of that in the top bit. It's 
So ideally it'd be to let this dry quite well. I think I might bring up my heating tool. Just look where I've put it. Might connect my heating tool, I think, and get that dried because I want it dry. So just put that brush. So I used the flat brush. What size was that? Size eight flat brush. And I'm going to actually dry this off. So just get my heating tool. I will plug it in. It's hard to decide what will actually leave and what will stay. So I'm just gonna, this is my heating tool here. It's an embossing tool. I'm gonna just quickly try and run that over and let it dry it a little bit. just done a little bit there and uh, what I'm gonna do is start trying to think what greens I'm gonna use for this background but what I like to do is mix my colors with black where's my Morris black here it's my Morris black so these are our taser paints that I'm using and I decided to just buy the big packs, how much, what sizes are in these again? 120 mil packs to use, because I had these smaller ones, which were 22 mil, and they're the really colorful ones, but I thought I should try the bigger ones, because I use the colors quite a lot. So what I'm gonna do with this is start creating some of my background leaves, and I'm going to mix the black that I've just squished out with some white and a little bit of green so I'm trying to decide what green I'm gonna use it's like a chrome green here I want to use one of the big packs that I got recently and the idea here is to get um, quite dark result for the leaves that are going to be at the back so I need to be thinking of my time here so I put my timer on my phone, so we'll see what happens with that. So I'm going to mix some of this light green um, and is it, no pale green with some of the Mars black and some of the titanium white and to get a kind of a grey colour, a dark grey colour and then start putting that colour in in the background. So I've been putting a little hint of green in there and then the black to kind of make it quite dark. A little bit of my oak, yellow ochre squeezed in there, but that's fine. Right, so I'm gonna start using that. And the idea is to kind of make it look luscious. So I'm using the very fine tip. I've kind of, um, let's see if I can do it. Squeezed it so that it has a thinner, like flattened it. And then I'm using that just a thin edge I'm trying to use the thin ed edge to create branches so this is not plain ball at the moment but that's fine uh, so I'm gonna do on both sides just do quick stems Wow it's just really refusing to do it I mean you can use a more detailed brush this brush is refusing to play ball today. So I'm doing the branches here and then I'll start filling the branches in. So I've started actually adding extra in these middle areas as well. You could use a smaller brush. This is a size 10 round brush and 
it's decided not to be skinny. Maybe I'm being too impatient. So now I'm going to start adding the leaves and I'm just going to pull, wiggle, wiggle, and then release. So these leaves, I actually don't mind being really big. So they're going to be in the background and you want a difference in your detail level as you get closer to the front. So at the background, it's good to see that there is some leaves. And you just basically, you can make some smaller ones to kind of give alternate looking leaves and things like this. So I'm trying to make sure that I have a sharp edge and then I wiggle a bit. Sharp bit, then wiggly wiggle. Ooh, brush today is just doing its own thing. I can see that. So a little bit there. I've been using these a lot recently and they're probably not, I'm probably maybe not washing the paint off as I should. So they're starting to go rogue on me. So it's just, there's not enough water as well. It doesn't flow as easily. So I just added a little bit more water. My whole aim is just to get the big leaves of the background. So you can see what that looks like. So right now it's just filling in the leaves where you can. over all of the colors in the background which it's good if you dry the background first because if not it's going to bleed into this which can be okay sometimes but then you can just end up ruining that whole shadow effect that you're trying to get at the back so i'm just going to mix some more of the green with some more of the black a little of the white I need to squeeze some more black into this because it's kind of run out. I only squeezed a little out, so that's why. So I know I want to squeeze this to like half an hour, but we'll see. I'm trying to be very quick with what I'm doing. This color might be a bit different. so. It I needed to mix quite a big batch, I think. So it's just about getting all those shapes in, taking a bit more time than I'm taking. I am slightly rushing it. I think the black is not enough in this. So if you mix different colors, you get kind of um, different shadowy results. So it's really interesting to try that as well. But here I'm just concentrating on getting the background leaves and then, and you can alternate the sizes if you want. And then the top area is going to be a different color after this. So you can see I've just thrown in that foliage there. And then I'm going to start adding some more colors. So I like that. That's quite nice. And right, I'm going to dry this a little bit more again so that it's a bit quicker. So whatever color I put next, I'm going to have more green in it than I did before. Now I'm trying to think if I, so more green, less black, basically. So, but there'll still be some black because it still needs that dark edge in it. And then no white. I'm not adding white in this next section. So there's a lot of green and then black. Well, yeah, green and black. So it's the pale green and then the black. So let's just go with that. And then we're going to start cutting across other areas. So I'm now trying to think, 
No, that's not actually impacting enough. I might go lighter actually. I don't know why I thought dark was a better idea. I've added a little light. So let's see. Is that visible enough? Take it back. Lots of green, black, and then some white. White helps with the opaqueness of uh, your piece. So it's really. So we're doing some more leaves and trying to flatten our brush. I could just put something there and swoosh a bit like that. So you can see the difference in the color in that one. And I tend to try and do smaller leaves with the next layer than the first one. And then I'm gauging it over the darker color behind to make it show a little bit more. So you can see that there is just building the layers behind the leaves that have gone before. And then just some of them can be bigger. I'm just throwing that one in. But overlaying and then some smaller ones just for impact up here. And leaves have different shapes, so I never worry too much about how they look. And add a little bit more water so that it flows a little bit more nicely. It can get a bit stiff. So I'm doing the occasional big leaf, but it's mainly small leaves. Let's do this a bit smaller. Some of it is translucent because of the thinness of the paint, or if you put like there's colors that are opaque. If you put them, then they tend to be not as translucent. Also, if it's if it's dried at the back, that's good because that helps it not to move into this new color that you're putting down. So it's just going along and adding this new color level layer. So the last time I stuck with the black. So you can go back and watch the first one. But this one I've been practicing and um, getting some new colors in the, you know, adding color basically. And trying to work out how to adjust that. Because the whole idea of what I'm doing is to paint medals and I can't paint a medal that is in black and white. so. I started off trying to figure out how I can use the different tonal qualities in the black and then I've started now adding the color to it. So then the next level will be getting even lighter yet. Yeah. And then you can kind of have different plants in between can add different colors. So I might add some yellow to the next layer of the green. That's what I'm going to do. So it's going to be a cheerier yellow in the green and quite a bit of yellow actually. So I really want to change this so that you can see the difference on the camera. So it looks like we're just doing this foliage today actually. So I'm just going to, so as before, technically I should let this dry. Let me just do a quick burst of heat. So it would be to leave it and have time for it to dry. my yellow. I'm going to add some more water to that. So I would usually have my spritzer which I could use to keep this all moist. So I'm, as I said I'm trying to work fast. If I don't think that's light enough I'm going to add some more white. I don't think it's light enough. 
So yeah, so we're gonna start adding new plants. Right, so sometimes I've ended up having to cheat in inverted commas if the leaf doesn't come out very well. So you're supposed to kind of wiggle it a little bit. Pull, wiggle, wiggle. And then I can put maybe one going out here. So pull, wiggle, wiggle. It's quite a big leaf to a small one. So you can see the color coming in. I'm going to do another one over here. So let's just... Uh, don't mind having straight lines and then just going in like that. So this is looking like a foliage one. It's just going to be full of making the leaves and um, and there we go. That one, another one, another one there. And by the time you look back at it, you're like, "Wow, look at all the layers." Um, that it'll have. So it's just being patient. That's before we even add flowers, which I don't want to rush into that. Maybe we'll continue that in the next one. And and then we'll focus on painting the, uh, the flowers if this timing that I've got runs out. So we could call this part one because I don't want to rush the foliage. I want it to be quite good. So what I do as well is sometimes I will place flowers just in random places, but I'm trying to get the stem. But sometimes once it starts building up, I start to just kind of plant flowers. If I feel I can get away with making it look like there's just a specific leaf somewhere, I'll do it. So, and what I don't want to do is cover up everything from before. So I'm having to try and just see how to work with it and how other colors are still coming through. Checking what the different greens look like against each other as well, or even in the background spaces. So it's really interesting to play with trying to go into the orange and into the green. And that whole idea of showing depth and um, yeah, it's just really nice. And then in my head all the time I'm thinking what kind of plants, flowers can I put in here to help this look really good. So I don't want to rush it, but so that's a lighter one. I think I'll go one more layer, one more, and I've just added lots of white into this green. Add some more of the pale green. Add some water. So, and then I'm going to see how this works. So I should try it again. Just trying to make sure that I don't mess it up. You can see what that looks like. a smaller brush but I've already started with this one so just add some more water so it flows really easy or a lot easier so um, yeah so one more starting to add very light colors so you can see the difference like I'm saying there and so the layers will become quite convincing because you're gonna have a lot of them that are just side by side building and try to make sure that the leaves look quite natural. So, 
not covering everything. Allowing some areas to breathe. Thinking of how to make it look natural. So I really like that there. And you can see it's now adding a depth in it. So first one I go and I just add the curve, trying to be natural. The yellow and the green, how does that look? Plain, learning how colors are working with each other. Communities of colors. These are all kinds of greens. And it's like, that's one thing I think recently is starting to click for me is how it's not about um, using colors in a very bland way. It's like being able to understand what the tones are about, how they work, how the shadow and light work for an actual uh, image. So I've kind of made this a bit thick here, but I add some water. Let's have this thing of never panicking. So just feed it out there and feed a plant in there to camouflage that. This one as well. I think sometimes painting is about bluffing. So if you are painting and you made a mistake and you go, oh my goodness, that's not what I wanted to happen. What we are supposed to do is learn from it and go, okay, I won't twist my arm in that way at that point ever again. Or yes, I liked that way of how that resulted. I'm going to do that from now on. And I did it by doing this with my arm. And But instead we go, no, I didn't want to do that. And so we just end up deleting the whole thing and people end up not seeing some of the really nice work that you can do, but also, um, you end up basically, um, what's the word? Not learning from the situation. So I'm trying to think now, I'm gonna, soon I'm gonna go into painting some flowers. This is just one more light bit happening here that I'm randomly throwing in with some yellow. So if I'm trying to show a plant in the middle that seems to be getting some extra light. In this area. So I'm gonna wash this brush off in a minute. Trying to see if I want to put this some of this in this bit here. So, right, so this looks quite nice and foresty. Um, maybe we will leave it like this. I was gonna start adding, you know, like flowers and other things as well, but I think I will end up um, messing this up. So we can stop here for today. And maybe another day, if I was so inclined, I will put the flowers in. Maybe I do that the next session before I even try doing another one of these panels that I, I was saying I had 10 of this to do. So um, yeah, that's what we've done today. Um, so this is an A5 panel, as I said, and it's acrylics I've just used to paint this. And uh, yeah, A5 wooden panel. So that looks, I like that, the results of that. Um, so the layers have been done very patiently and slowly. And I could have still taken longer to get this to dry off, but uh, I'm hoping next time to add flowers like, like this one that I've got here, which is on a wood panel. So next time we'll do something like add in some roses and some other flowers onto it because uh, I've started some of these um, other flowers 
on things so I'm seeing how these goes but these are some of my wood panel paintings that I do so thank you for joining me if you haven't subscribed already please subscribe and give me a thumbs up and look forward to the next session where we'll be painting some more foliage for my kind of meadow, th meadow theme that I'm doing where I would have added other flowers in here and things like that but I love the foliage and there's so much you can do with bigger leaves so I will see you in the next one of these meadow videos uh, so have a good day and I will speak to you soon bye